This is the second video of a two-part series on building custom pods for Adobe Connect 8. Uh, in the first video that I'm showing here in our blog, blog.easelsolutions.com, I showed how to get started building a custom pod. Uh, in that video, I referred to the Adobe Connect Developer Center where you can download the Collaboration Builder SDK. This is the set of libraries and code that you'll use to communicate with the Connect Meeting Room to create synchronous pods. Uh, basically pods that will send information to every single user and uh, stay in a, in a synced environment. The trouble with this is there's a lot of people out there who are not Flex developers uh, and, and maybe we're building custom pods with ActionScript too. Now, on our blog, I added a post about using ActionScript 2 to build custom pods in Connect 8. And it's a little bit of a hack, and it kind of works, but I strongly recommend you upgrade to ActionScript 3. This video is going to show you how you can still use Flash to build a custom pod for Adobe Connect 8. Now once I post this video, I'm going to also add a blog post to go along with it to blog.audiosolutions.com where you'll be able to download the source files. What I will have here is a zip file that's going to contain a few useful files that you'll need to make this happen. The libs folder index.swf index underscore testing dot SWF and service emulator app are all files that you won't have to touch that they will just have to be uh, with your project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this FLA file to build a custom pod with Flash. And the way that this works is the resulting Swift file from that FLA is going to get loaded into this index file because a custom pod needs to be built with flex so I've made this index file basically a little wrapper for whatever we build the only limitation is that you have to have this file called custom pod .fla for right now uh, in the future maybe I'll try to make this a little bit more dynamic but I'm gonna open up that FLA file if you watch the part one video, you'll see this is a very similar example. I wanted to build the same type of file. I'm going to build a simple chat panel. Here I have a dynamic text field called output underscore txt. I have a input text field called input underscore txt and a button called enter underscore btn. Before we can go any further, we have to make sure that this file can see those libraries. So if I go and look in my uh, files here, you'll notice there's a libs folder. This is containing SWIC files or ActionScript libraries that you get from Adobe when you download the Collaboration Builder SDK. If you watch the part one video, you'll see how these are used in a Flex project. For now, you just have to have these in the libs folder, and that's why I provided the files for download. I'm going to go to File, Publish Settings. Because as I said, I have to make sure Flash can see those. Now, in your publish settings, if you're using an older version of Flash, they might this might look slightly different. You'll need to go to the Flash tab across the top. But if you're in this version of Flash, you'll be seeing what I see. The first thing I want you to do is make sure your version is version 9. You have to be publishing to version 9 for now for custom pods. Action Script 3, and I'm going to hit the Settings button. And I'm going to go to the Library path to add a place for Flash to look for libraries. So I'm going to put in here dot slash, which means the same folder, libs. And then I'm going to hit OK. Again, this is just telling Flash where to look for more libraries of code. If you start from my custom pod file that I provide uh, in, with this tutorial, you don't have to really worry about this. This should be set for you already. Uh, I'm going to click OK. Next, I'm going to make an actions layer. And I'm going to open my actions panel. Keep in mind, you can use the custom pod.fla that I've included in the source files as a starting point for what you're doing. You don't have to do this all uh, from scratch. I'm just showing if you are going to start from scratch what has to go in here. I'm going to make a variable in here called connector. It's going to be of type SYNC sync connector. Notice in Flash CS5 and above, I will get code hinting for this 
if you have included that library. So if you're not seeing code hinting here and you've got the latest version of Flash, you might want to make sure you've got that library connected correctly. Um, older versions of Flash, like CS3 and CS4, you won't see your code hinting. You'll just have to make sure you type it correctly. You also need to make sure you're adding the import statement if it doesn't pop in automatically for you. All the code you see is required. Now this is going to be our connection to the connect server. This is also this is what's getting passed from that index file once this is loaded up. So again, there's a little bit of magic involved in that, but you just assume it's going to work here. There is one required function. I'm going to make a function called init. It gets passed a sync connector. Doesn't return anything, so it returns void. This function is going to set our connector variable equal to that variable that's passed. I just called it C. From here, that's all you need to get connected to the Connect meeting room. At this point, you're going to need to look into the documentation for the Collaboration Builder SDK for all the things you want to do. I want to be able to send and receive messages, so to this connector, I'm going to add an event listener it's going to be a sync swift event dot sync msg received. And I'm going to call a function called on message received. Again, if you got an older version of Flash, you won't get code hinting for this. You got to make sure you type it in there the way it is, uh, or just use that custom pod file to start from. Now I need to make this function. I want to make a function called on message received it gets passed a sync swift event doesn't return anything and we're gonna say if we gotta check to see what kind of message we're receiving right now if e dot data dot msg n m the message name equals chat. This is the message that I'm going to send, and we'll see how this works in a second. If that's the case, I'm going to want to add this into my output text field. I'll worry about that in a second. I'm going to add one more line in up above here. I'm going to tell the connector to allow participant publish. This basically says I want to allow participants to publish sync messages that have the name of chat. Otherwise, participants can't by default send messages, and that's because they don't have enough rights. So I'm going to say that it's okay for them to send chat messages. Uh, if you don't want participants to be able to chat, you would disable that and not include it. Okay, couple last things. I'm going to need to have a function. I'm going to call this function update chat. It gets passed a message as a string, doesn't return anything, and all this function is going to do is in my output text field, oop, it's going to append text to that field, it's going to append whatever the message is, plus a new line. So I'll see the message show up and then a new line will come in, so each message will go on its own line. This is the function that's going to get called when we receive a message. I'm going to say update chat with e.data.msgval, the message value. So the final piece is I need to be able to submit a sync message. So to do this, I'm going to take advantage of a new feature of, that was actually in Flash CS5. I'm going to select my button here, and I'm going to go to my code snippets panel, and I'm going to add a mouse click event. This adds in all the code along with a comment that I'll delete for doing a mouse click handler. Now, I don't like the function names that they choose, so I'm going to rename this to send message. If I change it here, I've got to make sure I change the function name too. This function, I'm going to make a variable called full message. It's going to be a string, and it's going to equal the connector dot 
user name appending on a semicolon and a space and the input underscore txt dot text. So it's going to say the username colon and then the message. That way I get a nice looking uh, chat panel. We're going to tell the connector to dispatch a sync message. The sync message is going to send a chat message and this is what has to match what we are listening for when we receive a message. It's going to send the full message variable as the value of the message and I'm going to put false in for delta. Uh, basically this means that if someone later on joins the meeting room they don't get the whole backlog of chat. You would maybe want that to happen. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, there's a couple limitations with catching up to uh, doing it this way. But for now I'm just going to put false in there. I also want to update my chat because since I'm sending the message I won't get the sync message received. So I'm going to update my chat with the full message and I'm going to have the input underscore txt dot text equal nothing. Clear out what they just typed. I'm now going to run my SWF just to make sure everything works. And of course I have an error popping up behind the scenes here wouldn't be a video without one. Uh, undefined property on message received. So I obviously spelled either this wrong or this wrong and it looks like it was the first one. So let me make sure Oops, those match. Now let's run it. Alright, I've got a pod I can type in here. You'll notice though when I hit enter I am going to get an error popping up behind the scenes and this is because that sync connector isn't defined. It isn't, doesn't exist. We're not running in uh, a custom connect meeting room. So what I need to do to actually test this is I first need to run this service emulator app. This comes with the connect SDK or the collaboration builder SDK. This is just a little headless SWF file that simulates a connect meeting room. So I'm just going to leave that running. Next, I'm going to run index testing. This is a little flex app that will load up your app. Again, the reason this works is because it's looking for custom pod.swf. That's why you have to have your flash file named custom pod. Um, this file now should be synchronized with connect. I'm going to open up one more copy of index testing because I really need to have two running here. It gets to be a little tricky to manage, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. I'm going to type in hello, question mark, hit enter, and you'll see it pop up here and in the other meeting room. So I have now created a synchronous application. The final thing, though, is to test this actually in Connect, uh, because it, this works on my computer, but we want to make sure it works in a Connect meeting room as well. So I'm going to close down all these different files. In order to put this in a connect meeting room, I'm not just sharing one SWF, I need to have two come along. Now firstly, I'm going to use index.swf because this doesn't have an emulator built into it, so that's why you need to use that. But I'm going to take my index file, I'm going to take my custom pod, and I'm going to zip them up. And I'm just going to call this custom pod dot zip. Now this can be called whatever you want. You just need to zip both of those files. Secondly, I'm going to come into my connect server and I'm going to upload my content. I need to have this uploaded to the connect server first. So I'm going to pick the zip file that I just created. I'm going to call this part 2 demo and I'm going to hit save. This is now going to upload and, and actually unzip this zip file to your server and uh, have it available. Finally, I'm going to jump into my Connect meeting room. I'm going to add a new share pod. My share pod, I'm going to choose to share a document from my content. Here's part two demo. I'm going to hit OK and it should load up that content just fine. 
Again, to truly test this, I'm going to need to have a second person in the meeting room. So I'm going to just copy my meeting room URL. I'm going to open a completely separate browser because I need to have a different session. I'm going to call this robot. This is the drone guest user. My new window has opened on my other monitor, so I'm going to, oops, i got to allow myself in there first. And again, this gets to be a little complicated. It's like you're in the matrix right now. You're a connect, two connect meeting rooms running on the same machine. But remember, I've got two users in my meeting room. So if I come into here and I type, hey, and hit enter, you can see that the robot said, hey. If I come back to this other meeting room and type in, what are you doing here? Question mark and hit enter. You can see that that message came back. Side note, the reason the robot can publish is because I had that line of code in there saying allow participants to publish. Otherwise, a participant wouldn't be able to publish. I'd have to upgrade the robot for it to be able to work. But I've got a custom pod working in my meeting room. Hopefully this helps you get started. For those of you who don't want to learn Flex but are getting comfortable with Flash and ActionScript, again, to recap the process is you're going to build a custom pod in Flash with an FLA file. The most important piece is that you add this init method in there, or init function, and have your connector variable equal to the connector variable that's passed to this function from that flex wrapper. From there, you can add all the events you want. You can add sync events. You can add events for when the pod resizes. There's all sorts of, of uh, uh, events that you can work with. I highly recommend, if you want to learn more, you go download the Collaboration Builder SDK and look at the, the help files that come along with that. They have all the code documented there. Uh, again, use my custom pod example as a starting point. You test with index underscore testing, making sure your service emulator is running. But when you're ready to go to the server, all you need to do is zip up your custom pod and the index file, and it should work. So good luck making your custom pods.